QuickBooks Online, export balance sheet reports to Excel. Get ready to start moving on up with QuickBooks Online. We're going to be using the QuickBooks Online test drive, searching in our search engine for QuickBooks Online test drive, selecting the option that has Intuit.com and the URL Intuit being the owner of QuickBooks. We're going to be using the United States version of the software and verify that we're not a robot. QuickBooks always mistakes me as a robot because of my chiseled physique. But in any case, we're going to be zooming in by holding down control up on the scroll bar. We're currently at 125% on the zoom in, noting in the cog dropdown that we're in the accountant view as opposed to the business view. We're now going to be, we could toggle back and forth between the two views as we go so we can see th where things are located within them. Right clicking on the tab up top in order to duplicate it because we're going to put reports in the duplicated tabs as we do every time. Right click on the tab again, duplicating again. Back to the tab in the middle, reports on the left. We want the big balance sheet as we do every time. The balance sheet as that's thinking will tab to the right. Reports on the left. This time the P to the L, the profit to the loss, the income statement. Let's close the hamburger, otherwise known as the ham boogie, and range change from 01, 01, 22, tab 12, 31, 22, tab, run it to refresh it, tab to the middle, close up the ham boogie, and we'll change the range from 01, 01, 22, tab 12, 31, 22, tab, run it to refresh it. In prior presentations, we've been working on the balance sheet report and then thinking about how we can group our information such that it will look as neat as possible and so that we can create it as easily as possible to present it, say, to a supervisor. But I'm mainly thinking as a bookkeeper preparing the reports to a client on a monthly basis or a quarterly basis and possibly yearly basis. So our methods for doing that is that, one, we can... We would generally want to save the reports. I would recommend basically no matter what method that we would use because we'll probably have multiple reports we might want to be providing at the end of each month. So we'll memorize the reports or save customization of reports. And then we could use going back to the tab to the left, go into the reports down below and go into the manage reports. We could use this manage report tool to give us a nice quick, you know, professional feel, try to put them all in one file so that we can give them to someone in one report. We took in a look at that option in a prior presentation, or we can basically save them as a PDF file, which we did in a prior presentation looking like this, so that we can then possibly provide the reports in a cloud drive format, like in a OneDrive or uh, in a Google Drive or something like that, as long as it's secure and whatnot and we might want to number them so that they can have some idea of which ones they might want to open first, second, third, and so forth. Or we can take these reports, for example, and possibly export them to Excel, not typically to present them in Excel, but possibly using Excel to do more formatting that we can't really do in QuickBooks sometimes, and putting them all on one PDF file with the help and use of a PDF printer. That's the option we'll look, we'll look at at this point. Now also note that you could do some combination of that. Once you export the reports, you might try to create a, a title page in Excel, for example, that could be a little tricky because Excel's not a word processing thing, but you can do that uh, to make it look more professional and bundle it up and then export it as a PDF. Uh, and that's another format, or you can try to combine Excel, embed Excel and Word and get really fancy with it, which is the most professional kind of, uh, I, I would think, format that you can put together but it can get quite complex uh, to do that so those are kind of our options so now we're just going to create excel i'll just show you how to do it i won't go into a whole lot of detail so let's go into the tab and let's let's create our reports again now i'm going to duplicate this tab and open up another balance sheet report so we can get that summary report so i'm going to right click i'm going to duplicate the tab and then let's go down to the reports on the left 
Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course, each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. I'm gonna scroll down to the business overview and I'm gonna be picking up that summary balance sheet. Balance sheet summary, which is often like the first report I might include, for example, and that's what we've been doing. So I'm gonna close up the hamburger, do our customization, which I'll do fairly quickly because we've done this a few times in the past. End date, 12-31-22, and then customize. I'm gonna take away the pennies. I'm gonna make brackets, make it red. And on the headers and footers, I'm gonna say that I want the summary up front. So I'm gonna say summary balance sheet, just to switch things up. Get rid of the summary at the end. Get rid of the date, time, report, basis, and boom, run it. I was running because Jenny told me to. And then I'm going to customize it. Let's save customization. I'm going to add a new group. I'm going to call it month end reports. Month end reports, just like we did in the other kind of scenarios or formats. Add it. And then in the groups, I'll select it. I'm going to also put a number one in front of this one because I want it to line up first in our memorized reports. Save customization and let's save this one. Okay, then I'll go back to the first tab and let's refresh the data. And so in our custom reports here, then uh, we should have in the custom reports, the summary report, the number one didn't show up. So I'm going to edit it. I'm going to put a number one in front of it. I did that totally on purpose so I could show you to put the number one up front like that. Save it and OK it and close it. And there it is. It There it is. And then we're going to go to the second tab. Now let's just format this balance sheet. Let's do our standard formatting. We've been doing a quarter by quarter breakout. So let's do that. To changing from totals to quarters. QTs and run it. And then I'll go up top again, customize it. I want the cents, brackets, red, and headers and footers. Let's put this a balance sheet by quarter, by quarter. I'm going to go ahead and copy that in case I got to put that in the name. I'm going to say date, time, report, basis, remove those, por favor, that's please. And then I'm going to, I'm going to save the customization and I'll put a number two in front of this one. Number two, put that into our month end reports. Boom, another one is done. Let's do another one. I'm going to do then the comparison of the last month of operations, December and November. So let's go ahead and go back to the totals and then I'll change the starting point. 11, 01, no, let's make it 12, 01, 22. So that's the last month. I'll run that just to show that's the last month of December. And then I'll hit the drop down and compare that to the previous period, November. Dollar change, percent change, run it. Jenny. And then I'm gonna say, this is gonna be balance sheet. Balance sheet. This is gonna be comparative balance sheet. Comparative balance sheet. Uh, pri current month and prior prior month let's do something like that i'm going to copy the name because now it's going to try to save the same report and i want to make a new saved report so then i'm going to save customization and i know i'm doing this fairly quickly so but uh, i want to get to the new thing which is the excel thing i'm going to make this number three i'm going to delete this name and paste it, save it in the month end reports. Boom. Let's do one more Uno vase boss. We're going to say this is going to go from 010122 tab tab, run it. And then prior year comparison. Boom. Done. Mui B to the N. 
and we're gonna say this is current year let's say year and prior year something like that and we'll save it saving it run it save it and i'm just gonna say this is number four and save it all right so now if i go back to the first tab and we check it out i'm going to refresh with the little refresh button now we can imagine at the end of the month we're going to utilize these reports just like we did before but instead of exporting them as a pdf i'm going to save them to excel and then use excel to put all the reports on one pdf format and use excel possibly to add any more formatting that i would like so i can just open it up change the dates at the end of each month and then instead of exporting as a pdf export to excel it opens up down here if you're in google chrome it doesn't give you the nice name so I'm gonna I'm gonna copy the name right here. I'm just gonna say copy, and then I'm gonna drag that into my folder. So that's not the right folder. This is the folder I put it in here under OneDrive Reports, and I'll just drag that in, and then I'm gonna rename it. Right click. I'm gonna call it just Reports because I'm gonna put all my reports in this one tab. So I'm gonna rename it. I'm just gonna call it Reports. 12.31.22 open it up let's check it out i want to open it up to check it out so now there it is now oftentimes i'm going to hold control scroll in a little bit so now if i needed to do added formatting uh within here for example like maybe i want to change equity to owner's equity or something i could change it owner's equity that's something that possibly you can do in QuickBooks, but some some formatting things you can't do in QuickBooks uh, sometimes. So you can do a little added formatting here. You would like to do everything in QuickBooks that you can, however, because if you have to do changes in Excel, you can have to do that every time you export unless you get like an advanced version that integrates uh, more fully with uh, QuickBooks. So, but obviously you could change the formatting of it. You can do a whole lot of stuff uh, within Excel. Now, if I look at, I usually will go to this tab over here and this is the page layout. So I can see that it fits on one page. So it fits on one page, there's the break. Now Excel will typically format it kind of on the upper left hand side. So the formatting isn't as centered as the otherwise reports would otherwise be if you just made a PDF or printed them. So you could format them further to center them more and do a lot more formatting once they're in Excel. But the point I wanna make here, and also note if you got very wide reports, things that are gonna be more than one page wide, Excel's often a good option just so you can convert it to landscape and make your own changes instead of forcing that one page to fit on one page with like a, with like a forcing tool. Otherwise the fonts get all different when you have multiple reports that are kind of uh, stuck together. So notice if I go to the first tab here, and I print it, then I can, I can print this one page. It's a little, you know, again, it's kind of up in the corner here, but when I get multiple pages, I can print the entire workbook. And then instead of printing to the printer, I could print it to a PDF file. So you need a PDF printer to do that. I, this one is a free one. It's called Cute PDF Printer. If you do a search for it in your browser, on uh, your search engine, you should find it. I'm not advertising them. That's just the one that I'm using currently. And so it's worked well and, and I think it's free. So you could check that out if you wanted to. So now we're gonna add the rest of the reports to this item here. So let's go back on over and let's, add, let's do the next one. I'm gonna say, let's do the next one. And I'm just gonna go back to my reports. I'll just open up number two. And this time I'm gonna export it to Excel. You have to have Excel for this to work clearly or else you won't be able to <laughs> export it. I'm going to open this one up this time because I don't want it in a separate tab. I want to pull it back over into one workbook. So I'm going to enable the editing. I'm going to select the entire worksheet now. I'm not going to format it at all, even if it needs formatting, because I'm going to take it to its destination and then format it. So you can select the entire sheet with a little triangle up top or control A and then right click on the entire sheet and copy it. So we're gonna copy, then move on over to the worksheet where the destination will be. 
I'm going to make a new tab and then put your cursor in A1 or the triangle selecting the entire sheet. You can't be anywhere else because you're pasting the entire sheet. A1, control V or right click and paste. And there it is. So then we could rename it. I'm going to double click down here and I'm just going to call it balance sheet by quarter quarter. And then I can hold control scroll in. I'm zooming in here. I'd like to see if it fits on one page now. So typically this one's getting a little bit wider. So I can then go to the layout view. This is this view. It doesn't quite fit on one page. Now notice when I printed it in QuickBooks, they, they forced it uh, to fit on a page, right? So if I was to print it in here, go to the page layout, it's forcing it to fit on a page because it's got the smart page breaks and, uh, this, and this item, the smart page break here could be squishing it together a little bit. But the problem is that if you get these and, and they switched it right here to portrait or no, that you have the ability to switch to portrait. But the problem is if you get a really wide report and you have the system force it to be on one page, then you can end up rep with reports that have different font sizes that can look a little bit funny when you when you add put them together. So once you're once you're in this format, if you've got something that's two pages wide, then your options will be, okay, is there a way I can keep it portrait? Meaning the layout is now in portrait. I'd like to keep it there if I can. If not, then I'll switch it to landscape, which isn't a big deal. So the first thing is, well, this, this looks a little wide, so maybe I can pull this column in to keep it on portrait. And that looks like enough for me. If that wasn't enough to get it on one page wide, and I don't really care about it two pages long, I care about it one page wide. If it wasn't enough, then the next step would be to make it landscape. And that is kind of an issue when you're printing it out and giving someone the report in a paper file, but it's not as much of an issue if they're opening it as a PDF file because the PDF files are now able to orientate landscape pages so they can read them, you know, they're not upside down or sideways, right? So it's not as big a deal to have landscape. Now, if if that still doesn't work, then you can kind of force QuickBook or Excel in this case to squish the page together. But again, that kind of messes up the font. So if I go to the file tab, for example, and go to print, I want to print the entire workbook using a cute PDF printer, allowing me to print both of the pages here. The second one fits on one page wide, although it's two pages long. If it didn't fit on one page wide, I can use the scaling option and I wanna fit it not on one page, but I wanna fit all columns on one page because I don't care if it's two pages long, I'd, I would have to force it to fit on one page. I would like to avoid using these options, however, if I can, because then it's gonna distort the formatting in ways that might not be you know, as visually nice. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna save this and then I'm gonna go back on over again. And, and remember, you could again go in here and do other changes, change the font, change the style, Within Excel, of course, you have a whole lot of options to format your reports uh, once once they are in Excel that aren't there that you don't have in uh, QuickBooks. Just, I mean, just some simple formatting, like you might format like the title here in a, in a title format, right? You might say that I'm gonna make that, you know, whatever, black and white, just to, just to make it different. That would be an easy little touch that you could do. You know, you can use your, your standard formatting up top and that will make your report stand out a little bit from other people using QuickBooks because you just added a bit of a touch of the formatting. You could change the fonts a little bit. You don't wanna go overboard, but you could do that. And again, you can change some of the names if you would rather have, for example, in the fixed assets be called property, plant, and equipment or something like that. You can change some of those. The more detailed you get on the changes though, the more you've gotta be careful because you'll have to make those changes every time you export, which takes a little bit more time. Okay, so let's do it again. Let's add another one and let's go back. And I'm gonna go back here. It won't go back. It's not going back. Okay, let's go to reports and let's add, let's open the third one. Same thing. I'm just gonna say export to Excel. I'm gonna open it up because I wanna copy it and then pull it over to my Excel worksheet where I want all my tabs to have it. Enable editing, triangle, Control C or right click and copy. Going back on over where the destination is right there. I'm gonna hit the plus button for another sheet. 
Put my cursor in A1 or select the entire sheet with the triangle or control A and then control V or right click and paste as normal. And then double click on the tab down below. I'm gonna call this uh, comparative balance sheet or something like that. And then I'm gonna hold control, scroll in. This one looks a little wide as well. It's a little wide. I'm gonna go to the layout view, back on over, it's too wide. So I'm gonna have to uh, do some adjustments on this. Now notice this total column isn't really doing much for me. So I'm gonna, I can just delete that, put my cursor on five and just say right click, get rid of that, that's no good. And then this this prior period, I don't really like that really, you know, that's something you can't really change in QuickBooks. I can change it here, I can say that's, I don't need it to say prior period. Of course it's the prior period. It's it's the prior, it's November versus December. And then I can make, I could try to make this a little bit smaller and I can try to make these possibly a little bit smaller. I can try to say, I'm gonna wrap the headers here because that's probably why this is a long one. So I could say, it's probably already wrapped. Yeah, they're already wrapped. So I'm just gonna say, let's just make this thinner and there's the headers. So I'll double click on it so I can see the header. So there it is, looks good. And then again, if I wanted to do other formatting, making the title like black and white, you know, just to stand out a little bit, a little bit of a differentiation, you can play with just some, some easy borders. You could say, does it look better to have borders around it like that? You know, you could play with that if you so choose. And so then I'm gonna go to the first tab and then say we want to print this one and then this is what it looks like thus far so there's the last one where i put the the lines kind of delineates it a little bit more if you have a report that that is quite long this way those lines might be easier on the eyes than not having them right because then they can you know then you could kind of orientate yourself although it looks a little busy at the same time so then i'm going to go back on over it just depends on what you what you what you like you know so i'm going to save this and then we're going to go back on over here there's a whole there's a whole genre of reports. It's like artwork, you know. It's everybody's got their own their own taste, and it's it's just as creative. So in any case, we're gonna do it to the last one. We'll export this one to Excel. Open it up. Uno vase moss. This is the final one. Selecting the entire sheet with the triangle. Control C. Go into the other worksheet and boom plus button put my cursor in a1 or the entire sheet and control v paste it double clicking on the tab and this is going to be comparative balance sheet year to year or something like that let's say i'm going to go to this tab and then back on over here to see if it fits on a page it does not so i'm going to say let's make this more skinnerized Let's get rid of this column. I'm gonna hold control and scroll up so you can see it better. I'm gonna get rid of that total cause it's just doing nothing for me there. You're doing nothing total. What do you do around here? I'm gonna fire you like you were working at Twitter doing nothing. Okay, and then I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna make these smaller. And so they fit on a page and then I'll double click on one of them. And there it is. I can make the header black and white and then maybe I put brackets around the whole thing boom and there it is so let's go ahead and export this I'm going to go to the first tab and uh, print it and then print it as a PDF we're doing the entire worksheet and so there's all of our pages so it looks coherent let's go ahead and print it using the cute PDF printer which means it's not going to print it's going to save it as a PDF because it's a tricky printer. It's saying we're going to print, but no, it's not. It's just going to make the reports. So then I'm going to put it in to the desktop and we've got, well, I've got all this junk on my desktop. Of course, QuickBooks online test reports, and let's just put it right there. So I'm going to save it right there. And then I'm going to see if I can find where I put it because I know where it went. I know where it went. It went in, I'm gonna go here and then I put it right there. So now we can, our options to give this stuff to somebody would be, we can email it one by one uh, or 
we can we can zip this tab and give it attachment as a zipped file, which is a little nicer if you're going to email it. You can put it on a cloud drive with multiple reports, possibly numbering them to give at least some format in terms of how they might want to open them. Or we can use the cute PDF printer to put them all on one report. They're a little bit different formatted, but again, you've got those other formatting options in Excel. Again, you can look at the difference in the look and feel. You could change it in Excel though. You have many options. You could put the header on it like that. And now you've got one attachment with all, all of your reports. And so then here's this one. Now you can see how it looks if I add the grid lines in it. And then here's the last one. So that's a, a neat little trick that works quite well sometimes to 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 get all of your reports on one file those little those little touches can be quite uh, useful to stand out from from other bookkeepers presentation of the reports especially to people which most people are who don't know what reports you know really are right they just want to make sure that you're doing whatever you're supposed to be doing so you'll be there when you when they need you which usually is year end at tax preparation time or financial preparation time then uh, so you want to think about how you're going to format your reports.